it is time to let go of some junk that you just do not need. So here are 10 things that you can declutter in June to lighten your load. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I'm all about helping you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life, which is why I do this monthly series of 10 things that you can declutter. It's just to make that whole process easier for you. It's to take the guesswork out of what to get rid of. So let's dive in and start with the first one, which is samples or travel sizes of things. Now, depending on which hemisphere you are in, you are either about to head into a vacation season or you have possibly just left it. Either way, chances are over the years, you have built up a little collection of tiny things, lotions, cosmetics, makeup removers, deodorants, things like that. Maybe you've even brought home one or two of those little tiny shampoo bottles that you get in hotels. Go through all of those things and whittle down your collection. Be very honest with yourself about how many of those you are actually going to use. Now, if you do use some of them, that's fine, keep them, but do have a realistic amount. I used to have a massive <laughs> pile of little sample sizes of things and I kept them, you know, thinking that anytime I go away, I'll bring them with me. But the reality was, anytime I went somewhere, that place generally had you know, shampoos and lotions and things. And then I just went and bought myself tiny little travel size bottles. And now if I need to, I top those up. But for me personally, because I don't really wear skincare or makeup, the amount of stuff that I have to travel with in terms of lotions and liquids and things is already pretty minimal. But yeah, pare down your collection. And then if you want to get those tiny travel sizes so that you can just decant whenever you're going somewhere, much better for the environment. Okay, let's go downstairs for this next one, which is becoming a bigger and bigger problem for me. I am talking plant pots, all of those ones that you get when you buy a new plant, of which I have bought loads recently. <laughs> and I just have all of, well, Scout made this one at school. Well, didn't make it, she painted it. But all of these little plastic or even little decorative pots, you may have some. Now is the time to go through. I know I have a lot to go through. There's plenty here on the back deck. There's also plenty in the garage. So yeah, I need to part with some of these. Are you a plant parent too? What types of plants do you have? How many do you have? Tell me everything. But yes, if this is a problem for you, all of these random pots, it's time to declutter some of them. Okay, let's go back inside before the cicadas get me. <laughs> Cicada apocalypse here at the moment. Okay, this next one may or may not apply to you. If it doesn't, bear with me. It'll only take a minute, but that is pet toys and accessories. So we have this basket here that's got like bowls and leashes and harnesses and stuff in it. Fun fact for you, it's actually for cats. They were all out of the dog ones, but yeah, I just turn it around. Nobody would ever know. And then we've got Jovi's toys in here. Jovi is actually at the vet today. She is being spayed and she also has to have surgery for a hernia. So the house is so quiet without her. I came back after dropping Scout to the bus stop for school this morning and came back in and normally Jovi would be there to greet me, but she wasn't this morning and it was just so strange. But anyway, pet toys, pet accessories. I'm sure some of them have passed their prime, maybe been chewed and loved on a little bit too much. So it's a great time to go through and discard any of the things that probably are not safe anymore for your pets or just not in the best condition. I know for us in particular, these, these are going. I made the mistake of buying these in Dollar Tree and she absolutely loves them, but they're not the best quality. Surprise, surprise. She very easily opens them up, gets all the stuffing out and then chews on that. And then there's a squeaker in there too. So obviously if that comes out too easily, that is a choking hazard for her. So I bought a few of these. I bought the first one, she loved it. I bought a few more, but yeah, she has ripped most of them to pieces. So these are going. Okay, another one then, and I wish this weren't such a big issue, but here we are. That is school 
papers they just add up as the year goes on i do have a great tip for you though for kind of keeping it under control as the year goes on i'll come back to that in a second but for now go through and get rid of the ones that you no longer want or need i'm sure you will still want to keep some like this lovely family portrait but for the most part a lot of these papers can go i think sometimes at the beginning of the year something can seem really special you know like your kid did a particular squiggle or something <laughs> and it seems like the best thing ever but then as the year goes on and they bring home a thousand more squiggles and they seem less important then so uh, go through get rid of the things that aren't as special to you anymore and then my tip for keeping on top of it what i do when she comes home with something during the week i will take the time to ooh and ah over it you know give it lots of attention and then as the week goes on i will collect all of the papers that she brings home here on the kitchen island that way she feels that we are giving them the attention that they deserve but then on the weekend when she is busy playing outside and spending time with her friends and stuff then most of these will be silently slipped into the recycling, not the one in the kitchen because she will spot that, but the one outside in the garage. I will say I'm not particularly sentimental when it comes to paper, so this is usually pretty easy for me to get rid of the vast, vast majority. But if you keep on top of it on a weekly basis, it won't get out of control. So if you keep all of them kind of somewhere visible, somewhere where your kid knows that you have seen and appreciated them, and then, when their backs are turned <laughs> into the recycling. These special ones then can be put away in, you know, a memory box or a folder or something like that. And then at the end of the year, still go through that folder because like I said, sometimes things that were important and big and special at the beginning of the year may not be by the end of the year. But the weekly prune is what is going to make this task much more manageable. Okay, let's flip it around to the fruit bowl new season means new produce new things that are blooming and growing and if you are like me then you probably bought lots of them and then you dread to think what lies at the bottom of this fruit bowl so take some time empty it out i also have some stuff in the fridge but if you've only got a minute or two stick to the fruit bowl itself dig out unearth all the stuff that is at the bottom and then give the bowl a good wipe maybe even sanitize it depending on how bad the situation is and then bonus tip clear off all the stuff that your daughter and your husband left on the dining table but i have recently signed up to one of those delivery services where they deliver fruits and veg that are you know like a little bit wonky <laughs> they're just not quite right for stores like stores won't buy them so otherwise they would go to waste they may be an odd shape or something and it's definitely been encouraging me to eat a lot more fruit and veg but i will say that when a new delivery comes in i have a tendency to just kind of pack the new stuff on top of the old stuff so uh, this bowl is overdue for a clear out okay we're back upstairs for this next one i brought you to my daughter's closet because mine is really dark and i just can't be bothered dragging up the lights for it so here we are the next category is skirts and shorts so either you are in you know warmer weather you're coming into warmer weather in which case you'll be wearing these things or maybe you are coming into colder weather in which case you are currently finished with these things either way go through and get rid of things that are not going to see another season and that could be for multiple reasons maybe it is in bad condition or maybe it just doesn't fit or flatter you anymore or maybe you've just moved on from it you just no longer like it it's just not your style anymore if you don't have skirts or shorts by all means tackle maybe tank tops or summer dresses and there are a few questions you can ask yourself that are going to make this process easier so does it fit me does it flatter me is it comfortable would i buy this again when was the last time i wore it and realistically how often do i wear it if you're not sure about something and it is season appropriate then wear it make a pact with yourself that you're going to wear it tomorrow all day long and then you will have a very good idea of whether or not that is something that you want to keep in your regular rotation or whether it's time to say goodbye okay let's move on to the bathroom closet for this next one i cleared these out recently so these should be good next category then is anything to do with swimming so swimsuits swim accessories goggles life jackets floating toys all that sort of stuff personally i despise swimming and i generally make it a rule to stay away from water <laughs> but 
My daughter, like my husband, loves it. Can't understand it myself, but there you go. It's coming into summer here now, so that means my daughter will be swimming every day. So I want to make sure that her swimsuits still fit her and if I need to buy any additional ones, now is the time to figure that out. But because she has now learned to swim, we still have some things that she probably doesn't need anymore, you know, like swimming aids. Can't even see it down here, but she's got. Rubber ring, doesn't need this anymore. We might hang on to this if we go on vacation. Is anybody ever going on vacation anywhere ever again? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then a life jacket. I may possibly keep that just if we do go on vacation and we're on a boat or something. I don't know that has happened one time in my entire life. Did not enjoy the experience, <laughs> but she did. So I may possibly keep that. But yes, it's time to go through her swimsuits and see which ones fit her and which ones don't. But if you have any swimming things, like I said, I don't. I tend to stay away from that stuff <laughs> as a general rule. But go through and get rid of the things that are no longer in good condition or that you no longer want or need. I keep forgetting the dog's not here. So I'm creeping around the place trying not to wake her up. Anyway, here we are in the coat closet. Now is a great time to go through any outerwear, jackets, coats, and maybe even some cardigans if you tend to wear those as layering pieces to keep you warm. Regardless of which hemisphere you are in, you are entering a brand new season, and that means that you're probably going to be changing up your outerwear or maybe even putting it away for a season. So as always, go through, make sure it's in good condition, still fits you, still flatters you, you still love it, and still does the job that it's supposed to do. Maybe it once was waterproof but no longer. And just generally make sure that what you are keeping is stuff that you are actually going to wear, something that you actually want to wear the next time it is season appropriate to wear it. If not, or if you haven't worn it all the previous season, even though there were plenty of opportunities, you can let that one go. This can be a good one because coats in general tend to be bulky, so even just getting rid of one or two can actually free up a lot of space in your closet. If you want to, if you have the time and the energy, you can also go through some additional stuff like hats, scarves, umbrellas, <laughs> things like that. Wow, the lighting in here is terrible. Let's move on, shall we? Okay, we're basically doing a full home tour here at this stage. But <laughs> anyway, this is my daughter's desk. Can you hear this lamp? It's making this buzzing sound. I don't, am I the only one who can hear electricity? I don't know, let me know. Anyway, <laughs> next up then is small scraps of paper or envelopes or wherever you might scribble down some notes and then just leave them and possibly forget about them. Take some time during the month of June to gather up all of those papers and bits and bobs, all of those scraps, receipts, things like that. And if you can get a central system where you write down all of that stuff, it could be a notebook, it could be an app on your phone, wherever works for you. Now maybe you find that the post-it note system does work for you, in which case, great, keep it up. I'm just talking about all of those bits and bobs, all of those little scraps of paper that end up spread out everywhere so that you can never find them when you're looking for them, when you need them, or you have a tendency, as I used to do, to write down somebody's phone number or a reference number or something. You know, you're on the phone and you're jotting down information and then a week later, you have no recollection of what that random string of numbers and letters refers to. Gather them all up, try to put some form of system together or you know just something that has rhyme and reason to it and then from here either use that system like I said could be as simple as just a notebook and remember that when you are jotting down information to give it a little bit of context so reference number for washing machine or such and such a person's phone number and even sometimes don't just write down the name because again if it's just a random stranger that you've met in six months time you may have no recollection of who that person is. So write down their name and maybe how you know them. So like John, electrician or something. <laughs> Scoop up all of those scraps and put them in a system. Oh, this next one annoys me so much. And that is all of the uh, catalogs, brochures, leaflets, little magazines and stuff that just seem to flood our mailbox. It's particularly bad when the seasons are changing because if you're coming into summer, it's all about, you know, lawn services. It's all about cleaning your gutters, washing your windows, um, like spraying for bugs. And if you're coming into winter, then it's all about cleaning your gutters and like winterizing your home and doing service checks on your boiler, HVAC, all that sort of stuff. And it's great that there are so many services out there, but I do not need 
11 bajillion leaflets about it. And look, I know it's easy to hang on to them. You know, you get one in the post, you think, hmm, I might be interested in that. I might be interested in having my house power washed or whatever. So you kind of leave it there for reference. Maybe it comes with some sort of discount code or something and you're thinking, you know, I might, but then the weeks pass and you realize you're just not. So find that stack of stuff or go around your home and gather them all up. See if you are actually going to take advantage of any of those offers. And if not, into the recycling they go. If it is like a brochure or a catalog or a magazine or something, see if you can contact the company and get off their mailing list so that you don't continue to receive them. Cutting out current clutter and future clutter. And that is everything for June. I hope this gave you some inspiration for things that you can let go of, things that you can get out of your house. If you didn't know, this is a monthly series here on this channel where I give you 10 things every month that you can declutter just to lighten your load and take the guesswork out of it because I know how overwhelming decluttering can be and you just maybe don't know where to start. Everything seems like a priority. So I thought I would give you some very practical, very specific things that you can tackle and most of them can be done in just a few minutes making it easy for you so make sure that you are subscribed if you want loads more decluttering advice and tips on living a more spacious life i'm going to link the rest of the series in case you missed out on any of those or maybe you just want a bit of a refresher maybe to go back over some areas and until next time